Sega Drunk. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker was one of those games that really made the Genesis unique. There wasn't anything quite like this on any Nintendo system. This is a beat-em-up style game featuring arguably the biggest celebrity in the world at the height of his fame. It's also based off an arcade game which was based on the movie of the same name. I should mention though that it's not a port. It's a new game entirely because the Genesis game is in 2D while the arcade is kind of an isometric viewpoint. Now it's worth pointing out that this game was originally developed in the late 80s and released in 1990, at least three years before the first allegation of child sexual abuse were made against Michael Jackson. So yeah, it's pretty weird and uncomfortable that Jackson not only has his own game, but the goal of each level is to rescue trapped kids. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. This wasn't as weird then as it is now. I just need to put that out there. Anyway, this game is aesthetically and thematically much different than most other games of the era, not only because of the use of Michael Jackson, but the use of his music, which sounds really good here and super sharp, and also the intricately detailed sprite work used to make MJ come to life. No rotoscoping here, just great animation. All his signature moves are here, including the moonwalk. Yeah, it doesn't do anything, but still, it's pretty cool. And there's also uh, this move. Uh, why? Why? This game is mostly in a beat-em-up style as you use all sorts of dance moves to take out mobsters that are holding these kids hostage for some reason. You find everyone and then MJ's pet monkey Bubbles comes out and directs you to a boss fight where you just fight wave after wave of bad guys. The gameplay itself is fine. I mean, it's functional. I do really enjoy the hat toss here and man, getting all the enemies on screen to dance with you, now that's fantastic. Imagine seeing something like this in Final Fight or Streets of Rage. The sprite work here is tremendous and I love how everyone just drops dead afterward. The biggest problem here is that every special move drains your energy. That plus the tedious quest of locating every missing child and going through every door or every trunk, and you have to find everyone to move on with the game. Then it's the tedious task of taking out these huge waves of bad guys. Woof. I mean, it just gets old. One silver lining is that at certain points, like if you catch a shooting star here, you can turn into a robot. Hey man, I just do the reviews. I don't come up with these ideas. I don't know what's going on here. I will admit, despite how weird and out of nowhere it is, it's pretty dang cool. The level design here just isn't very good, I have to say. Every area is huge and sprawling. It seems like a lot of Genesis games were like this, like X-Men, Echo the Dolphin, Vector Man. Anyway, the most frustrating part of the entire game is finding these hidden areas, like here, where you're supposed to spin down underneath the street, even though there's absolutely no indication that you can even do this. That's really frustrating. So yeah, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for Genesis has its ups and downs. I love the detailed sprites here, getting all the enemies to dance, and the Genesis-sized music here is really well done. But there's too much annoying stuff in the way that keeps you from really enjoying those aspects, like the non-intuitive level design and the boring, repetitive gameplay of looking for these missing kids. I wouldn't call Moonwalker a must-play by any stretch, but I wouldn't discourage anyone from looking at it either. It's certainly an interesting and unique piece of gaming history. There is not really anything else quite like it.